today. Prime Minister Modi has just disembarked from his aircraft. He's, of course, being given a, uh, a special welcome there at the Moscow airport, a special guard of honor uh, being accorded to Prime Minister Narendra Modi, a very special welcome being given to him. Ambassador Sajdev, what do you make of the red carpet laid out for PM Modi in Moscow? Chair, after a gap of nearly four years, the two, the, the two leaders are going to have a summit. Uh, it was uh, protocol-wise, it was the Prime Minister who was to visit Moscow, and he has done so, uh, resting... Uh, all those fears that Moscow had about the drift in bilateral ties, uh, and uh, India slowly moving away from Moscow towards the West. Uh, it, it would uh, assuage Russian feeling of being neglected. Uh, secondly, I think it remains to be said that the Moscow-Delhi relationship has been mostly top-down relationship, with the summits deciding the course of action between the two countries. So it's important for, uh, for us to be seen at the summit level. And uh, Putin-Modi summit would have uh, great consequences for the bilateral ties. I think here one should also add that uh, among the consequences that I expect to happen is the correcting the deep imbalance in bilateral trade. Russia was probably the third largest trading partner of India during the past financial year. Uh, but uh, the $66 billion trade was 19 to 1 in Russia's favor, thanks to huge import of uh, oil from Russia. Uh, that that uh, discounted oil has uh, tipped the balance, and uh, Russia has huge amount of uh, uh, assets that, uh, and in India that need to be leveraged. And uh, Mr. Modi would be trying to uh, discuss with uh, President Putin as to what can be done to create a better sustainability in the bilateral economic ties. To that end, perhaps uh, joint ventures in strategic areas could be launched. Indian investments in Russia, in energy sector, could perhaps be considered. And uh, we might even have uh, uh, issues concerning India playing a mediatory role in Ukraine-Russia dispute. Uh, time has come <coughs> for us to, for the world to put a stop to this uh, uh, this conflict. And uh, Mr. Putin's latest uh, uh, interviews have spoken about the conditions that he would like to be fulfilled before the war can end. Uh, these are very stiff conditions, including lifting of martial law, holding elections in Ukraine, etc., etc. But uh, that, that would remain to be negotiated. I should add, from the Moscow's perspective, uh, this links up with President Putin's visit to Pyongyang and Hanoi last month. So he's not putting all his eggs in Beijing's basket, uh, which has been commented a lot about. But he has gone to Pyongyang, he's gone to Vietnam, and now he's receiving Indian uh, my Prime Minister, with a similar visit uh, or summit with Iran on the cards after the elections have taken place there. So we would, uh, we, we could see Russia being a multipolar Asian uh, power with uh, ties with important uh, Asian partners. And uh, this uh, itself uh, might show that Moscow is uh, uh, quite keen to expand its circle of friends in Asia, particularly with India. And uh, India having a very, uh, uh, Moscow having a very positive balance of trade with India 
and being the biggest india being the biggest buyer of soviet weapon systems also puts a certain uh, strength in our hand with russia they would like to cultivate us they would like to expand the locus of cooperation between the two countries